So, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to Ruby Tuesday and JavaScript in Angle number five. So, this is our community group. So, we are in Facebook, we are in meetups, and we also have Slack invites. So, you can invite yourself to our Slack channel and then Wi Fi. So, get your Wi Fi, you will be needing it. Okay, that's good. All set. So next. So the venue is sponsored by ACAT. So we'll be in ACAT for this meetup and next meetup. And they are very supportive throughout the years. Um, so um, introduce yourself. I think we have new faces, which is good. We have one high school student here. So I'm I'm Louis. Um, I'm the organizer of this meetup. So, um, who is new first time? First time. Okay. Mind introduce a bit. Short introduction. Welcome, welcome. So we move to our first talk to um, Ju King. So he will be presenting locomotive. So welcome in. Good evening, everyone. I'm Zhu Keng. Today, I would like to introduce you to a real CMS, which is Locomotive. It's used by my previous project. So, first, I want to uh, first, what is CMS? CMS. Uh, you guys should know what is CMS, right? The Content Management System. We, a Content Management System, manage the creation, modification, update, delete. Of digital content, digital content is the, like the web page or your asset, image file, or video, and then it supports multiple users, which means like um, sometimes you have designer, sometimes you have programmer in your project. So if each user has their own role in their in the system, so CMS will do uh how is it? Um, um, it's like CMS support uh, as each user for each role and responsibility. So, what is the popular CMS currently? The popular one, the, the most famous one is the WordPress and then Magento, Drupal, the Joomla. Most of them, most of them is written in PHP, as you guys know. So today I want to introduce you the, the, the CMS written in the Rails, which is the locomotive. Um, there is some there is few CMS written in the Rails also, like Radiant or I think Radiant. Radiant is one of the, but it's outdated already. Uh. So now it's the most active one, I think it's the locomotive. And then there's some pro and con in this uh, CMS, locomotive CMS. 
the first one is admin administration is each CMS will have this one which create read update delete this is the most basic one the second one is that segregation of designer and developer responsibility which uh, the designer just do the design the programmer just uh, do the program uh, coding the next one is the one of the I think it's the one of the best feature in the locomotive CMS which they provide the flexible uh, flexible data structure it means that like you can define your own data structure because um, sometimes I would say every project their data structure is different so we can define uh, in a, define our own the data structure how to store the data in the database because they are using the MongoDB and then the next one is the multiple site capability which means like one of the uh, one platform can have multiple sites like micro site like the you have one event or one how say small event you just want to create a micro site to support it so you can create a new site and then you just how say manage at that at the one platform you don't need to go to create another platform and then create another site and then the next one is the built-in API. Every every locomotive site they do have an API for you to integrate with. Uh, how say? Let's say you want to integrate something using our, your site data. You can call the data through the API. Uh, and then the next one is the most simple or basic one is the SEO. I think most of the CMS got, uh, have this function. It's quite basic for the search SEO. And then, yeah, this is all the pro, pro of the locomotive CMS. The con of the locomotive, I can tell you, is that the community is not so big yet. And then it's still, I don't think it's stable still about a bit buggy but the good thing is the group the creator is still actively developing and fixing, fixing the bug so yeah I can show you how it look like This is the login page. Okay, from here you can see there is multiple sites. I should not show you guys this one, but it's okay. This is uh this one platform you can have multiple sites. If you want to create a new one, you just create a new one. And then you after you create, you come to the this page. You have and in here the page. You have many uh many page and then you can edit it here something wrong with this um, project so yeah um, let me find the page But I cannot show you today. <laughs> so normally in this content you should have the what you see is what you get editor and after you type in here the something in here it will show at the another one at site here. So because something wrong in this project is not showing and then you can and then you can do the all the setting in here the direct or publish at what time, what date, and the layout. This is all handled by the designer. The programmer one is that you do at the back end and then you deploy and then you just can sh show, show in here. This one is the data structure, the, the database you want to keep. 
so you can define how you want to keep your data or the this something like this you can define all the list columns the name the member the rows everything and then you have the SEO function or feature you can put in the keyword so in your page either the keyword will be there for SEO and then the next thing is the gallery gallery is the, the image the video you want to keep and then next one is the this is a setting the setting of the project this is a setting nothing much in here huh? you can you can explore it your own this have multiple language support multiple language this is a, you can add in your own the time zone the robot the empty scrapping one okay so the next thing is the for the developer is a api in here you have the own key and uh, token for you to connect to this project to use the data in another site so yeah basically is this is the locomotive cms which have the the all these function it's still i i think it's still not stable like they are still fixing the bug but the good thing is that the creator is still very active and then there are still a lot of times they, they have some big com big company the client okay so their web page is this one and then their client is like the BBC Disney the University of Chicago and then it's complete open source you can install your own and then you use just like the wordpress so yeah and then the documentation how to start is here how to get get start and then in how to get start and then the documentation of the for the developer yeah i think that's all from me do you guys have any question? Do you have any plugin for locomotive? Sorry? Any plugin? Yeah, no, there's no plugin. This is the, the cons. There's no plugin for this look, uh, CMS compared to the others, like the WordPress, the Magento, they got a lot of the plugin because the community is not so big yet. Okay. Will the library available for real able to move on? Yeah. The, you can you can modify the engine the library the project to be for your for your requirement for my project I modify something to to meet the customer requirement. Okay, Shane, please share your experience and why people use the I wouldn't say I prefer this one. <laughs> uh, this is my project manager decision. So yeah, I need to follow up. <laughs> Sorry? Um from what I know is like I have been there for like five or six years already. Same as the. Do you, do you what, what is the question? How far? What? How far? What? How far is scratch the free tier? So like, you can try it for free. Mm -hmm. So like, how far is it? Like, can I go to this? Um, I don't use their free service. Uh, I install the uh, the. How to I install their engine, just like what, how you install the WordPress, and then install the, the create the site as your own engine. So 
One, right? This one is their hosting, uh, it's their hosting service. You can don't use their service, you just host on your own server. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's quite straightforward. It's quite straightforward. <coughs> if you have a basic rubies, uh, Rails are Rails and knowledge, it's quite straightforward. And then you have the database Yeah, it's straightforward. You don't even need to set up the connection of the database. You just need to install the MongoDB on it. Yeah, you need to install the MongoDB because they are using the Mongo. That's all. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you, uh, Mr. King, for sharing locomotive. We will be moving to our next talk. Um, introduction to UVS by Xian Xiong. Which nearby? Which nearby? So, like introducing to Vue.js, I'm gonna just going to talk about Vue.js for a bit. Uh, introduction. Uh, so, I'd like to ask the group, like, who has uh, used Vue.js before? Because I heard some of you guys were JavaScript developers. Definitely, you've heard of this framework on the blog. Never used it before? Tried it a few years ago. Uh, because it was just started in 2016, so that's like two years ago uh, later. Uh, so for Vue.js, uh, I'll be talking about myself a bit, then I'll be introducing Vue.js and then getting started with Vue.js. So um, Xiong, I'm a front-end developer at uh, Biosoft for Bioenergy. Uh, we do industry solutions um, for manufacturers, semiconductor manufacturers in Bionopass, and I'm using Vue.js and Electron to build desktop applications for them. Okay, so that's about me. Uh, what is Vue.js? So Vue.js is in another JavaScript framework. We have so many of them. And um, no, for me, I use it quite often and I find it quite useful. So it is a progressive JavaScript framework, approachable, versatile, efficient, whatever it says on the website. But one thing that separates it from the others is that it has a very strong Chinese community. So for people who are struggling in English, but they, are start, they have good command of Chinese, uh, most of the documentation can be also found in Chinese and actually some of them tend to be more comprehensive than the English version ones. 
Okay, so like in because in the English version, JavaScript framework, uh, React tends to be the more popular one, and then Angular are coming on second, then Vue.js coming on third. So um, similar to React, Vue.js follows a type of data binding. It has a feature of two-way data binding, which is the main feature of it, and it has a component architecture. So you can actually modularize your stuff quite easily in Vue.js. And it has a really very, very minimal core, it's actually quite small. And then all the parts, are actually, a lot of parts that are needed for a web app or a desktop application or whatever you need to do with it is actually officially supported. And it has that like, you can attach whatever it is and then it just works. So it plays well with Laravel for web apps, Nux for server side rendering, or uh, Electron for desktop applications. So all of them have uh, officially supported libraries and uh, official core team maintainers. So um, yeah, they are quite well documented and very stable. So, so Vue.js is created by Evan Liu. He is, an electro he is an engineer at Google, and then he worked at Meteor. And then when he wanted to build, I mean, when he was experimenting with all sorts of Vue JavaScript frameworks, he decided to come up with his own. And he had a Patreon campaign, and then he had, the things just rolled on from there. So it just got bigger and bigger. So there are a few talks by him that you can just uh, check it out uh, when I share the slides later on GUI and you can like, sort of understand a better understanding of how Vue is and what your thoughts are behind it. So getting started with Vue.js, yep. This is my favorite start. There are a few ways to do with it. You can actually uh, use the Vue package or import by a script or by OS, uh, there's another mean that you can just have a hosted framework and then you can just get it in for you. But my favorite start is to just install npm, use yarn, and then get the Vue CRI. So currently Vue CRI is at version 3 point something plus, and it has a very good uh, interface, like the setup part, there's a very good onboarding for with the Vue, Vue CRI plugins. So to start off, you just start install the Vue CRI with uh, npm install global view, you initiate your project, and then you can select your required features. So thankfully tonight we actually have a um, really good internet compared to the last few times. So I can actually show you how it is. So let me take a good demo. Yep. Oh shit. Okay, that is not expected. Uh, give me a sec. Huh? No, it's like more like the thing is. Ah, uh, never mind. Um, hmm. I can actually do this in PowerShell too. Hmm. Oops. I increased the font size on the wrong place. Mm, yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's okay. Give me five. Yep. Okay, so preview this. Okay. Demo project. So you start it off like that, then it actually allows you several options that you can start with. You can just go with a default setup, like uh, in Babel and ESP. So if you select the features, they can actually have allow you uh, very stable onboarding with uh, several JavaScript uh, tools like uh, Babel, TypeScript, uh, Babel Linting, I think TypeScript if you want it, uh, PWA, well, self-explanatory. But I like to choose like router, which is for page routing and stuff. Uh, Vuex is for state management, and then you can usually some of them. Uh, some people like to use. CSS preprocessors from the get go, but I tend to like to add them afterwards because it depends on the project and what the client is comfortable with. So I will just leave it for some time later. Linting is uh, quite useful, it helps catch a lot of bugs. Unit testing, unfortunately, like my company, we don't really put a strong emphasis on it, so it uh, tends to left out, be left out. And uh, E2E testing is also some sort of testing which I have no idea about. Sorry about that. So you can actually use the history route for routing. It actually logs the history of where you go, and then you can easily use a route.back to just go back to the previous page. 
and they can memorize all your I mean it helps out a lot uh. then with uh, linter formatter you can go with uh, several methods uh, I like to use standard config is the best for me and then you should use lint on save rather than lint on commit because you should like get to know your code how it changes instead of until you wait until it commits and then everything breaks in the end so um, you can also place the config files for all these uh, features that you selected earlier in other dedicated config files or in the package JSON. Uh, it's, I mean, I would recommend using a config file because um, you wouldn't want to mix them together. Nah? Otherwise, it would be a very long package like JSON. But depending on your preferences, like for me, I don't touch anything most of the time. So yeah, you can also save this as a preset for future, future projects. So you can actually like record it down in the view CRI. You can memorize your settings and you can just start up the ground very fast instead of like going through all these manual stuff that you have you're going to do a lot of time so it runs through and then it goes uh, into all the packages and then actually i already have it here oh why is it everything gone oh yeah okay so this Okay, so this is the structure that it tends to show up, and you have like uh, it creates the source files, the components files, and the view files. So uh, it's actually already sort of hints towards you on how you can uh, arrange your components and how they can be uh, compartmentalized or something. But so the main file is actually app.view, where it, it has this uh, id.app and id.nav. Actually, the only important thing is actually id.app where Vue.js would latch onto it and then would load all your uh, other components into it. So app.view is the overall encapsulating app. And then for views, it's actually like pages. So in the pages, you have this like structure of template, script, and also somewhat, uh, yeah, template and script. So it's actually a single page file so you can have your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript within one file. Um, so here you can see that it's importing hello world from component hello world.view. So it shows like an example of how you can import components into your template, and you can just use them as hello world. So if you see in hello world.view, uh, it's actually the whole the, the, the page of it. So let me just serve that first. So we do yarn and serve. You can actually see it here. Yeah, serving a view page. So you just do yarn and serve. It will show up on localhost 8080, and it can uh, it's shown actually like that. So what I want to show is that actually yeah, this is the page that you can get from the first page, and this is home and about. So home here will have to be your hello world app. So the hello world app is actually here, and this message is the one that comes from outside. So this is also a way of showing a two-way data binding. So if I change the app dot view, and I change this, no, this is about this home dot. Oh no, this one. Yeah, it's a message. Again, hello. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> forgot. Save it. Actually, reloads and then immediately you can show it over there. Yep. For some uh, applications like Brown, if you use Electron or Nux, sometimes they include the auto hot reloading. So um, you just reload when you develop it. Yeah. Yes, you see that Sorry. Okay. Oops, that was not intended. So, a uh, view file is actually uh, consists of three parts. You have your uh, HTML in template script, uh, in template text, uh, script for script text, and style for style text. And here, actually, in template, there are actually several uh, HTML directives that view does provide, as you saw. So you have v on, you have v for, and then uh, you have events and uh, props that you can include within the template. So you can like uh, you saw as earlier. You can have this sort of tag within it. So this is a message tag. I think you can get a bit more. Um, 
Yeah, so basically you have this binding here and then you can have also tags like V on, V4 and so on so it can help you to better uh, structure your HTML simplify your HTML uh, component So let's go on mm -hmm. So configuring the Vue.js project uh, sometimes you use usually you use the npm library so like to run npm uh, install with something like that but I'd like to show you guys about uh, Vue UI. So it's a kind of a new thing for Vue CI. So here it's correctly running. Let's, okay, Vue UI is actually a Vue CI tool that you can use to uh, configure your Vue project. It's quite new, and you can see that like, it loads up like that in uh, localhost 8080. And this is your whole view project. You actually can configure your view projects, uh, configure their dependencies, and then set up their uh, configurations straight from the view UI. So it's actually quite a useful tool to have. Um, where's the cursor? Let's see this. So plugins, you can see that um, they have this. Uh, they list down all the plugins they find in your project, and you can actually. Uh, when there's a, when there are updates, they will prompt you to update it, or they can show you the latest version of it, and you can like decide whether or not you want to add the, the update or not. So to add plugins, you can actually configure between um, the configuration. Oops. Um, you can search for plugins. Like I think you can do that electronically, and then you can like you can just like install it directly like that. You can just install the view electron and then you can just plug it in and it will just load and reload all the files for you so that is from the ui part and then you can also like check out which files were changed and what the configuration was otherwise there's also dependencies oh it's actually here Got it. <laughs> so these are plugins and then these are dependencies and then you can actually uh, change the dependencies here so you have your main dependencies and your developer dependencies it's like you can just choose where to install them and then here you can actually just browse through all your dependencies and see what version they are and what sort of status they have you can click on them actually you can just go to more info they can link you directly to their sites or you can just remove them with just a click of a button here so you don't have to deal with the CI as well but there is a good thing if you use the CI uh, which I will show later then the project configuration you will see that what are the configurations available uh, like you can change your stuff here, theme from save. Um, you can also change the theme though, like but you can change this to yes or no. And then uh, see what sort of like theme thing you want. And for all the other stuff, actually for some of them, they have like officially reached out to these third party libraries and then offer them support. So that you can actually uh, integrate it into their view UI and they can be uh, configured directly from here. So the last bit is task. Actually, these are npm commands that you can use, and then you can just directly run them from here. It will just tell you what the status is, errors, warning, blah blah, and quite a lot of useful information as well. So basically, it's like your admin dashboard without like uh, anything much configured. Okay. So what I wanted to show is that. Hmm. So this is the the app. Can combine it. So actually, okay. So if you add an officially supported uh, library, like mm, I think it's not this one. Sorry, it's view P five view CI. So you actually can have this like sort of view plugin that you can add in, and then on the view plugin that you add in, right? So if you use the view officially supported view CI, uh, you can actually have a lot of features along the way. Uh. So you add view C5. Then it just instantly installs, search for it, and well, it patch. Alright. So you can actually have a different several commands that you can set afterwards also. So you can either have a preset, a prototype, or configured. Um, but usually I just go with default. 
then it will like resolve all the packages that I need. And for certain libraries like Electron or Nux or even um, some of the data JavaScripts, you can like, configure all of them as you just install them. Then here you see that they also like do examples for you, but you can turn this off also if you don't want them to change your files. Uh, actually, it changes them. Um, how to say? It will change the how the, the app automatically. Sorry, yeah, it's uh, my bad. So previously it was like that. It was like this. When it served. Yeah, it takes some time for this. But one thing uh, about this like CRI thing is that it tends to take a lot of computing power when it runs. Uh, so uh, it's like, hmm, kind of a trade-off. Uh. So it actually changes it like that. And then it already has all the features that you can think of. Uh. You can actually just uh, explore the documentation and you can start developing from there. So you can have like a whole material framework inside your view app, like maybe 10 minutes and then you're ready to go to just start developing. Okay, so that's about it. Um, yeah, that's about the talk that I had. So additional resources, you can actually find more news on Vue.js. Documentation for V2, actually Vue.js is actually version 2.7 something. But the Vue CR at Vue CR3 uh, is the one that I showed just now, which was where a lot of handheld <laughs> grouping as it feels like developing on Rails, uh, I would say. Like Rails earlier, it was like everything so magical. But right now, Vue was, I mean, JavaScript also has this sort of framework that's catching up. Uh, but you can also, but most of the guides are apparently also Vue CR i2 for most of the dependencies. Uh, that's a bit of a manual work, but it's quite similar to 3. And then GitHub, apparently uh, about 100,000 stars, and then 16,000 forks. CRI over there, and then they have, you can check out the awesome, awesome view GitHub people. So they have like, all these like awesome reels, awesome view, awesome, I think Laravel also has one. So a lot of the addition add-ons, you can find it over there also. And yeah, that's about it for me today. So Vueify is actually a material design framework that's uh, built for Vue and uh, it has it has uh, several HTML directives that you can use uh, immediately. Uh. <coughs> so I'll just show a bit on their site. I have a question about the Vueify as well. Uh -huh. If you already have a very complicated application, you will crash, uh, and then suddenly you say that oh, mm -hmm. we want to use material UI and then we include Vueify into it. Mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, you can. Uh, you actually can import it singular, uh, component by component. So you can actually uh, stop stop it. I mean, from what I did just now was actually you need to wait when you are setting up your project from the first start. So if you are importing it after a later date, uh, you would have to use the views CRI two, and then it will like import just the library, and then you can just like sort of uh, later you can like, in the main .js file you can import whatever parts of Vueify that you want to use. So that's a bit tough, I would say. I mean, not tough, like, you have to do a bit more manual work. But actually, you can, uh, there's this Vue CI install, which is the fast track handheld installation. But actually, you should like uh, also use a CDN install, or like you can just use a normal NPM install, uh, existing one, then you can just uh, add it in, and then you can later decide to import three parts of it. So this one is the whole min, whole part of min, but uh, down there you can actually decide on which components of view of that you want to have. Just import them, just only them in your main.js file, and then you can use them in your other components. Uh. So that guy, I uh, like, didn't answer his question. Like, um, what is the performance when you use view.js like, just in the terms of building desktop applications? Uh -huh. It's quite memory intensive. Huh? So for Vue.js with Electron, for now it, it tends to take up around like 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, although it's just a sort of idling. Huh? So um, for complicated tasks, like if you call it a lot of times, it can easily go up 
I mean, during development, it goes up to around 3 to 4 gigabytes. But when it's running, it takes out around 1.5 to 2.5 gigabytes of RAM. And that is if it's not crashing. Uh. If it crashes, it can easily take up the whole bit. And then, uh, I mean, if you accidentally program sort of a bad loop, right, or something, it can actually, uh, it takes out a lot of RAM very fast. Uh. That is caused by electron or? That is caused actually by electron. Yeah, so you actually doesn't Feel doesn't do that much of the performance impact. Um, it's more like uh, for Electron, you have to. I mean, if you're using View on Electron, you have to specifically inform Electron to do garbage collection from time to time. So you have to clear all the stuff out. Otherwise, it will just keep holding onto data values, and then for some reason, the threading starts to go crazy along the way. Uh, that's our experience. Uh, my experience uh, is like uh, uh, for me, I. Uh, sort of had to do a reset on the data, so ask Electron to clear up this space uh, after a certain time and make sure that uh, there are no two, I mean, manage my set intervals very carefully. Yeah. So for view, actually, there is like this life cycle view thing. So life cycles instance, uh, uh, yeah, so actually, Alligator.io has a better somewhat explanation of life cycles than, uh, than the official documentation. So for all these, like the life cycles of view, uh, like the before mount, mounted and before updates, you have to uh, clear up your data scores and clear up set intervals uh, carefully uh, when you are going through the pages on your single page app or your desktop application. Are you going to clear everything or just the like, interval time ops? Sorry? So for view, when you go from one page to another huh? page, have you like, going to clear everything? No, all the, all the ones that I created. Only the ones that I created on the page. Now. So, so there are times that I just uh, left them because I thought it was okay to just leave them, but they tend to be just recreated and recreated and it eventually just crashed on production. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you about MVVM? MVVM? Yep. Um, it's, the, it's the architecture that's used for Vue.js, uh, so model view, view model. Why do you and model view, model view, and view model. Yeah. So Both it's, are the same, right? it's, quite, it's no, not model, exactly view, view model. Yeah, view model oh. is one thing itself. Okay, oh. view model so is the hyper. It is something like MVC, but the thing is that like the way you put the code in different files is a bit different. That's it. And then some people do say it's like the, I think it's the part where they actually have like data down here, and then this sort of model is contained within your. Uh, view file or something like that. Then that's how you. It's part of the architecture that I don't really. Uh, I can't really explain it, to be honest, at now. But it's like there's you have this data model, and then you have your view component, and then you have like a component that integrates between your data and your view. So they call it combine it as view model. Uh, so that's the idea behind it. Sometimes this model, a view model thing, has some view parts. I think. Actually, I can't really separate them from control MVC or MVVM. It's just uh, something. If uh, I mean, going on like this examples, uh, starting up, I like picked it up within like two uh, two weeks to a month. Then I could like sort of write a uh, usable code or something, just following the structures. And for now, like even until now, like around a year afterwards, starting is, it's like I'm like finally understanding why they wrote it like that. And then when the, when the things get complicated, we need to see things right sometimes right. Like when it gets big enough. So uh, that's how the structure is. Uh, so you have this data thing where you store all your local state data, but you also can have like, uh, hmm, everything is in local state right now. But uh, in this export, you can actually have props where data pass in from the parent. And then you can also like have uh, events emitted where you emit uh, data up to the parent. And what else can go here? Oh, you have methods here also, and then you have to get uh, methods are like functions of the of the component itself, and then you have getters, which is uh, something that goes to the state and retrieve the data from the from the centralized state. So it's a part of the state management thing, and then you can sort of uh, have uh, automated filtered data. So when data comes in, it automatically filters it, and then it does it once, so it's quite efficient. 
uh, compared to uh, some other things that uh, you otherwise you would have to do a sort of set interval to just pass the data. I mean that you get the data and I can just like if I define a getter here, I, if the data when it comes in and it changes it automatically passes it and then presents to me the data that I need. So it's a quite useful thing uh, for a web component where sometimes the data is like in JSON then you have to actually uh, change like the JSON Unix timestamp into a readable JavaScript timestamp. Then you, if you put a getter there then you can just like uh, get the output from the getter and then it only updates when there's update on the I'll say on the state right so if the state changes it pushes all the way through to your component and then it updates on your UI so the, that's very handy for me uh, my experience then it just pops up on the HTML part yeah I'll <laughs> okay uh, any more questions for view this yes. um, otherwise that's about it Thank you. 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 <laughs>so just now he start with uh, build your ISO program will start with something simple to get start with react the first thing you do is you have to install like uh, node.js and then you have the npm come with node.js the latest version of npm will come with something called npx so npx is something that you can directly use some command like for example build that CRI or even create react apps that you doesn't need to install on your own computer and then you can just create and apps for React. But the thing is that for Korea apps, it comes with a lot of dependency directly. It's not like the pure React. Basically, React is just a UI library. It doesn't have anything. You can integrate with any so any services and then directly using it. But I will just show the Korea React apps first. So for example, if I go into a Korea React apps, oh, let me open this file. Just now when he said about the view dashboard, basically everything in, in the view dashboard is actually presented in the package.json. Like for example, the dependency and then the dev dependency in this case, I don't have any. And then the script is like whatever you can run with the yarn serve or yarn whatever. And then the yarn serve is basically like yarn start for this case and view is to view the apps. So let's start with the most simple career real apps. And you'll just open up the apps. So this real apps, and then it will tell you that you can go into app.js and then change something like over here like welcome to binary Ruby plus JS in R. And you just change. So that's the the starting point. If you start with Google Red Apps, then it will be like a very easy way to get start. But now I'm going to the more fundamental of React that you doesn't really need something like this. So in this case, okay. So so basically, this is just a hello world, and in this case, it's like, okay, when you are writing your hello world for HTML, you can just directly using div, and then, or maybe p or something, like the paragraph or something, and then hello world, 
But if you want to use JavaScript, then you probably will change to something like, okay, I need to get the documents element from the outer layers, like the roots, and then in the elements, I create, an, create another element like the div, and then inside this element, the contents, I want to give it hello world, and whether I want to give it any class names, then I can append it into the, the root elements, and then, so for example, inside the, this root element, you will append the elements of a div with the text content hello world. So that you can see that over here is a, a container, a, a roof with a class name container and the class content hello world. This is a basic JavaScript. And if you want to move it into React, basically you just need to import the React libraries and then the React DOM libraries. Then basically you just change something like using React DOM. Maybe I just directly using a sample only. So basically, oh. so basically from the Gorilla Red apps, you just change it to Red DOM stop render, render the elements. Bas okay, you just change like, everything from the document to React and Gorilla elements. Gorilla elements are functions that take in the class name. I mean. The HTML text and then object for the HTML text and and then the child anything inside the HTML text and then you just uh, render it into the the element into the root root elements from the documents then it will look exactly this oh sorry in this case the text content have two of it that's why you have a hello world and goodbye. So this is the third thing on the, after the commas. Basically, it's the same things as if you pass in a children's, right? Hello, Finan. Then I can just remove this funeral. Oh. It's still the same things. So basically, children's is the same thing as the anything inside the div. So after this, use JS as with paper. So, okay, writing create.element, it doesn't look good. For example, it's just like writing jQuery or something else so that we can include paper to do some transform so that we can use something like JS at. Uh, so basically, you just import another packages from paper the Babel stand alone so that it can directly run on the HTML instead of you need to have a JavaScript file for doing all this kind of transform and everything else. And then you have to change the script tag from text JavaScript to text Babel. Then you got the elements and then this thing you can easily change it to something like div hello yeah. Okay, this file is zero one. Yeah. The moving script you see Babel. Oh yeah. So that extra code syntax then it will still be the same. After this one. Okay, reusable components. So for example, if I want to run the div, oh, another thing about this is that because in HTML, when you want to have the tag, a tribute for a tag, you use a class or an ID, but JavaScript class is stand for another thing. Basically, it's, a, it's like doing the object-oriented language, the class, so that in this case, we use class name to replace class in so for the Babel to understand what it is. And then basically so element 
maybe I can have something called constant root equal d. So if you want to read, it's a reusable. Yeah. So basically, you can type in another things and then you just render element inside it. Twice. Uh, this one should go too. So that you can run, for example, the element variables over here, I'm using it twice, like reusing the elements again and again. But the issue is that, for example, they will accept everything as the form. like a HTML text way of writing it. But in this case, it doesn't render. It's because of, if you go to the, oh, never mind, I just go here. So the thing is that uh, it doesn't really understand when your variables for the JSX text is using a, a non-capital letter starting. So it will treat it as a normal HTML text. For if you change it to a capital starting, the first letter of capital, then you will treat it as, oh, I understand this character is from the JSX variables, so that it will make use of it. Okay. Uh, In this case, I just move to zero three. <laughs> oh, okay. Because just now that things I'm doing is just like I'm saying this thing equal to this. Basically, what you have to pass into is actually a functions instead instead of directly the JSX. Then it's supposed to work. Yeah, basically, error function is just like a normal function with return. So it will still work. So error function is just like anomal anomalous functions. You create it by making it. It's not great ahead of time and anything else. Pardon? That, there are some differences. For example, if I write the error function in a class component, it will automatically inherit the class so that it knows that this, the, this keyword is belong to this class instead of you have to bind this into the functions. And there's, there's some other usage as well. So basically, you can just create functions and then Oh, just now I didn't go into more details. So for example, when I create these functions, I can have like props, and then everything inside here, it will become props.children. So that no matter what I render inside the element tab, whatever I write inside, it will become the children in the app over there. And then I can also using something like message or whatever keyword and then put it all here like dot comes and then self closing. And but in case if I'm using message, it's not a children anymore, I have to change the message. So it's still working. So basically anything inside the the HTML text 
in between of it, it will become a children's. But you can also give other properties, anything you want. So this is the basic things about it. So basically, it's just go for the So in this case, basically, I just have two children in between. But okay, I just use message. For example, there's some component. If I don't have anything for it, and I have another component, so I have a message equal hello. Now you know that the first one is going. Yeah. It can't. It cannot unwrap it. Let's go back for comments. Smashes a keyword or something? Self closing. So, for example, if you have one and then you have another, if you got anything, it will just start showing the first one, but it doesn't show the second one. In case if you have anything that over there and you doesn't really want, for example, in your component you have to like determine whether what to render. If there's something, I render this. If there's nothing, then I render something else. So basically, you can just like. I will just change it into arrow functions because I don't really like to see the function keywords. So for example, in the arrow function way, no, it's supposed to be this. You can use the side message, question marks. If it's the, if it's the I go for the div. If it's not there, then maybe I go for something like there's no message. Message, because message, because. So basically, when you have something, it will go for the first one with message. This is just a currently expressions to check whether there's a message or there's no message. Even if you go back to the functional component, then it will become. I mean, the function, the functions. Is do the same thing, basically just like putting message here, question marks, and then no message. <laughs> Sorry. So it'll be it'll be still the same things. But eventually, if you have too many things inside your HTML, then it will be hard to read as well. So, in the case, zero four. Okay, in that case, basically, okay, I'm moving to something called I'm using index of HTML, and 
those import, I'm still using H, the HTMLD import, the React, React DOMs, and the Babel. And then in the script tags, I just include the JavaScript so that I can basically remove anything in the middle of the script and then create a new box. Yes. So just paste it in, and then in the in that of HTML, I just reference to what I will copy from the script tags. Okay, that that's another issue about this is that in Chrome and any modern browsers, they treat the file system as cross origin because they doesn't really know whether your file system is a network file system or your local file system so that I'm going to use something like web server for chromes and then I'm pointing to my own directories yeah I start it so if I go to 127.0.0.1 then it will show the message just like before and uh, as you can see, it's referent from Geo3. That's what I just directly copy from the HTML into the JS. And what else do I need to do? So Geo4, what am I supposed to do? Input Geo question next. I think I'm not going to do any direct coding because it seems that I'm making quite a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so I just directly go for like the Jiro file. It's just basically, oh, I should do, I should do some. So for Jiro three, I'm using functions, and and this is also a function, an arrow functions. But in React, we actually have the componentized circle as well. So we can actually change this to something like class, message, stand, react.components, and then there's no more message. No more records. And then in the render functions, it's the one you use to render the things back into the to show the user what it is. So the poor this component and uh, index to okay. They still message as then yeah, the components scroll records return. Oh, because currently I'm doing the React components, so it doesn't really know what this message is, so that I need to include it as a prop. Then it will still be there. Basically, anything passed in in. So, for example, that's a component that anything I pass into it is a prop. And anything I state over here, it will be a state. Like for example, I can have like, hello equal word. So in case if there's no message, then I'll go for this dot state dot hello. Then I'll go for word. So anything inside the component itself, it will become a state. Anything you pass in is a prop. And go back to Jiro 4. Go components. So for now, I'm just like, for this one, input view. Oh, just let me go to Jiro 4. I'll let you type it out. So for that one, basically, I create another component called input. Is a pro component. Pro component basically means that 
if any things I get in from the props doesn't make any changes, I'm not going to update this at all. So and in the render, I just take out whatever from the props and then render a label and input. So in this case, I have I'm calling these input components three times. And each of it, one is for email, and another thing is like for name, and another thing is for age. So back to index. If I just change to 05, then it will become something like enter your emails, names, and age. And in this case, you will find what's wrong with map and key. Okay, um, so one of the reasons why we are using React instead of a normal HTML is because of if you look at this file, in case, like for example, I want to type something. Okay, this basically is a, I'm running something like an interval that, for example, there are some forms you want to, like a quiz form or something else, you doesn't want the things always go in the same, that like question one is always the question one, you want it to be a question four sometime, a question three sometime, so it will jump over, like you can see the email jumping to the second one and then jump back to the first one, something like this, and when you click on it, when you tap something, you can see that the focus go off when you're doing the HTML, because this is the DOM, when you, okay, let me show the code. So basically, inside a body, I have like three groups of function, of inputs, and one is for name, emails, and age, and then inside the JavaScript, I'm just running something like shuffle the nodes and then sorting it and append it back to the list. So in the DOM way, they doesn't really know that what you are currently focused on and whatever stuff is inside it. So that's why the focus is go off because they just remove everything and re-adding it back into it. But in real way, it's not happen like this. You can always refer to the right one. So in this case, let's go back to the jurofile.js. Um, I just go for state. I'll just copy some data from another files. So for example, if I have a lot of inputs and then Okay, so for now I just like moving out all the three inputs into the state for this tree and it will still render as okay. Oh, I should not close it over here. So it still render as before, but there's no in the world yet. I was just showing something inside. So, which one I should go first? Okay, state is whatever the state is, and then whenever the component mouse, we have the same, almost the same lifecycle view have as well. We have something like components, did mount, equal, mount. just a functions. Then I will just create an interval. Just copy the code from some other place. Right. 
ですけど。Okay, so basically, this is a, a randomly sorting. The inputs and then put it back into the state for the input so that over here they will detect oh the state is changing, then it will re render it. It's not happening. So maybe I should just add something like So when you see this, it's like when I change, the focus is still on, so I still can keep continuing tapping. It doesn't really affect anything at all. So that that's the purpose of having deep using real is that it's using shadow DOMs. It knows that what you are focusing on and wherever your UI is changing or whatever, it still can keep you on the track where you are. So for example, if you have a like a list view that always came in new new information and it pan on the tops, you can always still score to the right place because you know where is the focus is. And beside this okay. So maybe zero six. Oh I just just now I accidentally skipped how to handle in the form. Basically, whatever, how to handle a form is just that on the form you add in on submit and then you have a function that calling to, it's calling a function to handle the submit and it takes in all the events and then because in JavaScript the on grid events will come with the targets and inside the targets it have everything inside the form and then you can just get the value out of it so in this case Probably I should just show the index of HTML for zero six. So for example, so you can see that the information is somewhere inside. It's like it, it knows that for example the first one is uh, the handle input so okay I, in this case I'm just using array destruct destructions or whatever I forget what is the word for it and then it will take the first one for the first one, the second one for the second, and third one for the third one. But eventually, the better way is actually using object, spreading the object instead of the array, because in this case it's working. But in the zero seven case, uh, I already moved it. Let's see if I'm using the 06 for the 07. So 
in the zero seven basically is running the set in the world and moving around. So for example, in name and age, one, two, three. So when you see the age of the first one, then it become the first one. It doesn't make sense because this kind of destruction is just going from from the first one to the last one, and if your array changes, then it won't work anymore. So in that case, actually inside the target, there's something called elements. Uh, it has all the object inside the forms, and you can display it by the ID. So you know that oh, email is email, name is name. You, the the order is not important anymore. So for example, if you run it over here, age 133, when it's, it's the first one, but it's still going to print it as the last one. It's the second one, it's still printing it as the last one. So the event of targets of element is the the things for that. And another thing is that basically you also have something on change in the inputs. So you can toggle all the changes and then make some error handling or something, for example, like how long is it? So but in my current case, can I make smaller? But it's gonna be hard for me to see. So in my current inputs components, basically I just destruct everything from the props. So in this case, even something that requires MATLAB or whatever you put inside your objects, it will still go into the inputs. So for example, if I'm not putting the age, the two bits. <laughs> so I tell you, you have to fill it in. But and if I make, just delete this, then it won't tell you anymore. So basically anything that comes with HTML for the handling of anything, I can just spread the object inside the inputs and it will just work. So for example, over here I didn't have the type the inside the input, it doesn't see for the input that I have type like emails, like text or numbers. I have specified it over here and it was just working fine. For example, email. It was tell, oh, for email you need an X and then something dot something. Then it will go through. If you don't have it, then it will just say, it will just give you some warnings. But if you want to handle it your own, you can also add in something called on change. So you start handle change. Stop. Set. State. Error. Error. Then I can have something. Stop. State. Dot. Error. So basically, this is like whenever I press on the. Oh, that's not good. Oh, basically, maybe I just need this. Okay. 
So when there's nothing and when I create having something done, I need to rub it. So over here it will know that there's something goes wrong or whatever. So you can handle it when you're using that on change to handle it. So this basically is the simple things about React. And we can go into something a bit more complicated. So this is a basic stopwatch that you can start, stop, and create. And over here is just like basically this is some style. Okay, in React way, we usually will write everything inside JavaScript. So you can write it like this, and there's still a few ways to do it the style as well. And then basically this is just a component called stopwatch, and then they have a state for the, the labs, it's the time counting and whether it's running. The reason why I separate initial state and state is that because when I'm doing clear, I need to clear everything back to the initial. That's why there's something called initial state. And then when someone click on run, then it will run it. Then it's just basically just an interval and then counting the time between now and just now when we start it. And then we clear, it just clear everything back to zero. And when you unmount it, okay, in React, basically we don't remove everything when we unmount our components. We remove anything that might run in background and then might mess up your apps. For example, you got the timeout, create intervals, any API calls, and some event listener in case if that event listener is page specific. So, in this case, we just clear the interval for the time countings. And then in the render, basically, we just get the labs and running from the state and then render it. So that's how it looks like. But this, this is the old way of doing React. In this project, I'm already using the React and React DOM 16.7. This is the version come with the React hooks. So for component like this with some set states and in the world, it's really easy to convert into the latest way, the latest React way. Basically, you just need to include use states and then use ref. And for example, in this case, the labs and running we have two states, so we can just separate into labs, set labs, equal you state, and the default value is zero, so I just give it a zero. And for runnings, I can just uh, the default is false. So I don't no longer need state for this. Oh, another thing is that the lasers react they are not going for the class anymore. So this can only this can be a function that returning <coughs> just the functions. And then I can have uh, things is like in the world timer or something use ref. Now, when I'm setting it up, the interval have nothing. So, since this is not the function, the arrow function doesn't make sense anymore. It can be changed into a normal function. And then there's no more this dot state. I can just go through everything, remove all the states. And then create interval. When, when you want to create in the world, it's not going to create this dot. The, it's not going to create the interval grade like this because 
currently is using the ref. So in this case, it's going to train clear the ref indoors. And so the same thing happened here. It's going to become the ref occurrence for the indoors. And there's no more set state. It's going to become the set labs. Is going to become sub runnings. Not for running. So for clearing, it will be the same as well. It's going to clear the indoor timers and initial state. Okay, basically. For initial state, it's just like setting the running to false and then set the labs to zero. For current in the world, become the current. There's no more render function because this is not a class anymore. It will just directly go like this. And this should be fine. All of, All of this have to become functions. And because it's not a class. It doesn't have component will mount anymore. It becomes something called use effect. Um, I think but I'm not, I'm not going to write the word for now. Thanks. So it's still the same things. But the thing is that we are not using class anymore and it's using real code. And the best thing about real code is like it might not be just real specific. They are like the even you event you or something, I'm not sure how to say the names. This guy who created the Vue.js, he actually created another component called Vue Code which you can directly use it inside the view like um, how to use it, just look at an example so basically you can just view.use hooks then you are using the view hooks and the view hooks basically just like 177 line of codes and probably in the future version of view it might become a standard we are, we are not sure about that yet, but it's currently in RFC for React. But the view version of, from what I can see in the code right now, they have a lot more things like, although it's not something very, very complicated, basically it's just like the life cycle, they, they still need the life cycle. So they have something like use mount, use destroy. So probably because of what he said that in the view you need to clear basically almost everything but basically the, the use destroy is still exactly the same as the use effect but just the way to handle it is a different it's just returning the use effect and the way to hand, handle it is a little bit different for the mount and the destroy or something else so basically that's it for my talks do you guys have any questions? Pardon? Yeah, okay, jQuery doesn't have shadow DOM, so I don't think jQuery can have the focus for following it.
Yeah, this thing is introduced by React, and currently Angular and Vue also have it. And uh, the biggest difference between React, Vue, Angular is that React is a library. It's a very small and specific for building the JSX, like this kind of things. And then Vue and Angular, they are frameworks. They have a lot of things coming out with it that you can generate it. Like for example, oh, I want to use Router, I can just simply just say that I want to use Router, Vue CLI, install Router, or Vue Router or something like this, and it just work. But for React, it's just like, there's too many ways you can do it. You can die using the window.locations to get the path and then handle it, and you also can use react.routers, and there's a lot of different ways as well. Okay, basically, use effect. Use effect is quite complicated, so basically, it's just like use effect. You open, um, just open it. I can just go into the. Okay. So use effect basically is a functions. Then you can just like uh, returning another functions. So when you are calling use effect, it's like it's running on component will mount. When you are calling the returns, it's running on component will mount. So whatever you are doing here, is that like the component is just mounted. Whatever you are doing over here is the before the component going to unmount. So in that case, when I want to clear the intervals, I just need to move this code over to the returns. And then for the use effect, because right now React doesn't have something listening to the prop change anymore. So it's or is the second parameter for the use effect. You just add in a commas, and then for example, I just want to listen to the lab change, I will put labs. I will listen to whatever change, I will put whatever stuff. But if no matter what change, I want it to be running, so I just put in an empty array. That's how it works. So you're moving a centralized component with mouse, component with a mouse, and then we receive props and everything else into something like this. For example, if I just want to change it for the labs only, then this use effect will only listen to whenever anything changed in the labs. And even though it's a props or something else, it will still list only effect on that one. That's how it works. Any other questions? No? The rare hook part? Okay, this thing is pretty new. Even though, even though in the React world, we are still using alpha versions. So if you go to the package JSON I'm using right now, you can see it's 16.7.0 alpha.0. It's not making into any, it's not a puppy, like you should use this right now. Even though for view, like we have the view hooks, You can see that inside here it says something. This is a proof of concept for using rare hook in view. Totally experimental. Don't use in production. So it's something in future they were using it, but not now.
So, thank you, Siwali, for sharing React.js. So, next, we are going for five tech tips. So, any quick tips that you want to share? Anything not really related to Ruby or whatever, as long as there are tech tips. Anyone? Anyone? No. Maybe you can share about the Twitch coding, live coding something. So, in Twitch, okay. uh, the video from live broadcast website, they actually have a channel for live coding. And anyone can live code online so that other people can look at you when you're coding. Then you will, you will not post procrastinations. You're just like, oh, people are looking at me, so I can't stop. Okay. Interesting. Livecoding.tv. Yeah, something. It's a movement right now. So there's a lot of people that are trying to live broadcasting when they code. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice tips. So that's tips number one. Any more tips? Podcast. So it's like code pen, it is similar to code pen. I O So we have in JavaScript we have code pen. So this is more on the front end side where you can there's a lot of examples. Okay, compared to code pens, I usually prefer something called code sandbox. So you can have multiple files instead of just one JS file, one HTML file, one CSS file. So it's on only for JavaScript or it's more here? It's supposed to be work for everything. Okay. But basically you are building a web front end, so it doesn't really useful for any backends. Yeah, okay. Oh, Coca is a live for example when you have a console log inside your your yeah, computer, it will directly show it on your on your ID. It's like kind of a new thing that I also just found out recently. So imagine like I have this sort of deep code to do, right? So I have this like thing to do. And then I can just show that it up from here, like Yes. So new JavaScript file. Very nice. It gives you the last response. So you can just like take, then it show up on the side there. So I like this. When I was debugging it, I just do it like that. And then like for things around the way I could just like lump this here. Then it will show what was inside. So like for here I just do lump. Then it will show what will, what will be shown, and then like here I can just test it up like F. Then it will show the arrays that was like a skew. So like so back to you're debugging that line. Um, you will you just there. filter and sort of debug the line immediately. Yeah. So to, like you could quickly like try out all the arrays, like the prototypes and all the stuff. That uh, for me, I just try all the arrays and the prototypes that I don't understand. Uh, like sometimes that it's like filter. Uh, for each uh, splice or the other stuff like I, I couldn't understand it then I just like oh how would it be like if I do filter and then find a map and then if I could like go in all the stuff and for each set and you can see inside the set what would be shown in that code uh. yeah, so you can save a lot of console.log uh. but that's for beginners like because I use a lot of console.log Good, good. Tips, very good tips. 
those who want to start learning JavaScript, that's a very good one. We have five already, right? Do we have five? No, two only. Ah, two pen and box. For course, VS Code plugin called Fractal Colorize. Colorize. It's called Fractal Care. Nested, nested functions. functions, the bracket. Oh, yeah, easier yeah, to identify. Yeah. Ah, and okay. Like, like, okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Then let's wrap up for five. Good. So we're looking for speaker for next meetup. Who wants to volunteer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Okay. Ethereum and Ethereum. Okay. So we have one. Anyone? Okay. Next time, January. Is it January? Okay. So, so they are doing every second Tuesday. Yep, every second Tuesday. So January, I will reserve one slot for you for January. Okay. Next one. Anyone? Anyone? Share. Good. Okay. So we have one speaker for next one. Yay. Shout out. Any hiring? Anything want to announce from anyone? No hiring? Hiring? Okay. So hiring for front end? Full stack. Yeah. Any position, any experience in location? Then, okay, so post that up. So um, later, we need to fill up the attendance form to pass away cat. And thank you for everyone for being here. See you on the next meetup. Thank you. So let's open the. So here is the form. I fill up. So,